Well, hello and welcome to lesson four. In fact, the final lesson of this four part series. Now, if I was to ask you, how can we know with any degree of certainty that an event way in the past happened? I mean, a time before there were photographs, a time before there was video film and all those sorts of things. How could we know with certainty? You know, sometimes in history at school, we'll learn about battles in Scotland and in England, in this in this country that we're a part of. We'll learn about the Romans invading. How do we know about that? Well, here's the thing. What there is, is we read historical accounts that people wrote. And then we compare the historical accounts. There might be more than one. Obviously, if there's more than one account, then that's interesting because you think, well, OK, comparing them, where are the small differences? There's always going to be small difference in eyewitness accounts. And that's a point. Are they eyewitness accounts or did someone just hear about these things? And so today we are going to think about the claims of Christianity, the claim of the Bible, that Jesus rose from the dead. And one of the first things, of course, we want to be certain is this, that Jesus actually was dead. Jesus was actually dead upon the cross. Now, I think we can be very certain. The Romans put him to death and the Romans knew what death looked like. Many people were crucified upon a cross. Tens of thousands of people were crucified upon a cross during the time when Jesus was alive and around those times. But today, of course, we remember really just one of them, himself. Now, the Romans put a spear in the side of the Lord Jesus to ensure that he was dead. He was taken off the cross by two people and placed in a tomb. And there's a picture of that. We don't know exactly what it looked like, but it wasn't a grave like we have today in the ground. It was more like a cave and they rolled a stone across, as you can see. And there were guards put in place. Now, this was all on the Friday night. Now, on the Saturday, that was a special day in Israel. It's called the Sabbath. It's still called that today. And Jewish people remember the Sabbath. They don't do any work on the Sabbath. And so what happened is the Bible records that early the next morning, which we would call Sunday, there were some women who were going to the tomb. These women loved the Lord Jesus Christ. They were followers of him. And the reason they were going to the tomb was this, to put perfume and to put ointments on his dead body. That was why they were going. They didn't think that he would be risen from the dead. In fact, they would be sure that he would be lying there. Now, all in his life, Jesus had spoken about rising from the dead. But, you know, sometimes it's like us. It's like, like me and you. We hear things, don't we? But we don't quite take it in. And these women hadn't quite taken this in. It's hardly surprising, is it? Someone saying they're going to rise from the dead. But anyway, they go to the tomb. And what a shock when they get there. Because when they get there, the stone has been rolled away. There'd been a violent earthquake, the Bible says, and, and an angel of the Lord had rolled the stone away. The Roman guards had ran off and the women were shocked. As you can see, they look inside the tomb and it's empty. It's empty. Now, at this stage, they don't know why it is empty. But Mary, one of the women who was there, heard this voice, a voice of an angel. And it says this, why do you look for the living among the dead? Wow. Why do you look for the living among the dead? 
So the angel was saying, well, he's not dead. He's alive. No, at this stage, no one's seen him. But the women go back to the disciples, the, the close followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, and that they make this report. Now, the disciples find that very hard to believe, as you can imagine. And two of them, Peter and John, run to the tomb. You can imagine, we're going to see. We, we, you know, we know he was dead. We know he was placed in there. We thought that was the end. Again, they hadn't listened very carefully to what Jesus had taught. But they get there. And John writes down how he arrived first, but he didn't go in. Behind him was Peter and Peter caught up and Pete was a bit more, you know, kind of like some of us go straight in, dive straight in. You know, John was a bit cautious, stood outside. Peter goes straight in to the tomb and they look and there's something that they see. You know, John writes about it. You know, John was an eyewitness and he sees there on in the tomb the folded grave clothes of Jesus. Folded. And actually the Bible records this. John, John, wrote, John wrote it down. You know, in those in the days when John was around, you'd have a scroll, something like this. And maybe John wrote it on something like this, like a like a scroll, because he was an eyewitness. And he said it was then he believed. Because he thought, well, there's some possibilities. Where, where's the body of Jesus? Now, if someone had stolen it, they wouldn't have unwrapped all the grave clothes and neatly folded them. No, they'd have gone in to get the body and get out quickly. And it wasn't as if, this was really unlikely, of course, that Jesus had sort of got a little bit better and he wasn't really dead and somehow crawled out of the tomb because the grave clothes were folded. Now, John believed then that something had happened and Jesus was now truly alive, although he was dead. And what we're going to do today is we are going to examine six resurrection appearances of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the resurrection, the word resurrection means raised up. And that's the word used about the Lord Jesus Christ risen from the dead. So follow with me and do look carefully at the pictures as they come, because it's going to help us in the worksheet later. Who says what and to whom do they say it? So do concentrate on this as we look at six. Now, there's more we could look at, but six will do for our lesson today. Look at number one. What happens is the first resurrection appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ is to a woman. And that woman is Mary and she was crying. She was crying because she was so sad. She, she actually didn't understand then that Jesus had risen from the dead, confused. But what happens is she hears the voice and the voice says, Mary. And she turns round and says, teacher. That was how she addressed the Lord Jesus Christ. She realised that the one standing before her wasn't a gardener or something like that. But truly the one standing before her was the Lord Jesus Christ. So the very first person who saw the Lord Jesus Christ risen from the dead was a woman. And she went back to the disciples and told them the things that he had spoken to her. I have actually seen him and he has spoken to me as well. So that was resurrection, appearance number one on that Sunday, the day Jesus rose from the dead. Do you know that that Sunday is now what we refer to as Easter Sunday? Anyway, back to the story. Mary has gone and reported it. Now, what happens then? There is the second resurrection appearance I'm going to tell you about. 
Because what happened on that Sunday, there were two disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ and they were walking away from Jerusalem. And they were walking away from Jerusalem to a, to a village called Emmaus. That's about seven miles. So what's that in kilometres? About 11 and a half kilometres. You know, it would be a two and a half hour walk, something like that, I guess. And they were talking to each other about the things that had happened. And as they were walking along that road, someone comes up alongside them and asks a question. And the question the person asks is this, what are you discussing together as you walk along? I mean, what are you talking about? And what happens is the two disciples speak to that person and say, well, do you know what? This is what the, we're speaking. This is the big news. It's about, here we go on the screen, Jesus of Nazareth. The chief priests and our rulers crucified him. Some of our women went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. Now at this stage they hadn't heard what Mary had come back in that first resurrection appearance and said, I've seen him and I've spoke to them. They didn't know that. And so what happens is on the road as they journey along, this person speaks to them. As they get into their village, what was the name of that? Emmaus, that's right. As they get to Emmaus, Jesus is going to carry on, they think. But they say to him, no, come, 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 come to our house and let's have a meal. And at the meal, Jesus actually takes a little bit of charge because the Bible records that he takes bread. I think that's quite a simple meal. He takes bread and he splits it and gives it to them. And it is then that they understand who they have been speaking to and who they will eat with. Because they then understand that this is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can imagine, can't you? Something of that surprise, that absolute amazement and thinking, wow. How did they recognise him when they hadn't before? Well, the Bible doesn't say how they did that. But can I tell you what I think is most likely? See, when Jesus was tearing the bread and giving it to them, well, the Bible records still of the Lord Jesus that the, the nail prints are still there in his, either his wrist or his hand where the nails had gone through, where they put him on the cross. And I tend to think this, Jesus hands the bread to them and they look, obviously at his hand, they're going to take it, and they see where the holes, where the nails were. You know, that's what I think. And then they understand who it is. Well, they actually, the Bible records, they um, go back to Jerusalem to tell the others what that what has happened. Why well, they can't keep this news secret. You know, we've had a Sunday afternoon walk and, and Jesus Christ has, has spoken to us. We we have to tell people we're witnesses to this, you know, and you know that's written down in the Bible as well. Well when they get back they do tell everyone. So that's appearance number two. On the third resurrection appearance the two have gone back to Jerusalem and still on this one day, this is now the third one, yeah? Jesus appears in an upper room. The doors have been locked because the disciples were very fearful. But what happens is into the room comes the Lord Jesus Christ, risen. Now they're afraid. But the first words he says to them are, peace be with you. you know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. 
They thought actually they had seen a ghost. You know, obviously people believed in ghosts then and people believe in ghosts now. But they said, oh, we've seen a ghost. But Jesus says, no, no, I'm not a ghost. Look at my hands and my feet. In fact, touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh or bones as I have. And he says to the disciples, it's me. Touch me then. So he spoke to them and he challenged them to touch him. Now, we don't know that he did that. We don't know that they did that. But they were then convinced that they had seen the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, what happens is one of them actually was was not there. His name was Thomas. Now we don't know where Thomas was, but Thomas wasn't in the room on that Sunday night. Maybe out doing something or getting something. Who knows? But when Thomas comes back on this Sunday, this is what they say to Thomas. Now imagine you were Thomas. Um, you know, you'd seen the Lord Jesus Christ crucified upon the cross on that Friday. You'd seen him shut and put into a tomb and yeah, he was dead. And then what happens is your friends, you come back to them and say, guess what's happened, Thomas? Guess what we saw when you were away? You know, you've missed out on this one, Thomas. Oh, yes, we have seen the Lord. We've, you've seen the Lord? And, and Thomas actually didn't believe what they said. In fact, this is what Thomas said. Unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger in the side into his side, I will not believe. You know, that's where the spear had gone right into the side of Jesus. Now it flowed blood and water, the Bible says. And Thomas said, unless I see that and do that, then I'm not going to believe. Well, that was a bit much, wasn't it? I mean, his friends had said we've seen him, but Thomas sort of doubted at that point. But you know, maybe we can understand that. I mean, Someone rising from the dead is miraculous. And Thomas wanted evidence. But Thomas actually had to wait a week. Yes, he had to wait a week. Because that same day on a Sunday, but just a week later, is what I'm going to say is the fourth one. The fourth resurrection appearance that I'm going to tell you about. Now, this time... The disciples are all gathered in the room, but Thomas is there. This time, Thomas is there. And again, into the room comes the Lord Jesus Christ and says these words, peace, be at peace, don't be afraid. Peace be with you. And then he goes to Thomas, put your finger in hair. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. You know, the Bible doesn't record that actually Thomas did put his hand in the, in the nail prints or his finger in the side. He saw it and he knew who it was and he just said these words my Lord and my God. You know, Thomas wanted the evidence and the evidence he received was the Lord Jesus Christ standing before him. Now, so Thomas says, my Lord and my God, resurrection appearance number four for this lesson. Two more. So many days later, what had happened is Peter and others went fishing. And there were seven of them. Peter had said, I'm going out to fish. And he went out. And then the others said, we'll go with you. But they went. Now, this, these people's jobs before they were followers of the Lord Jesus Christ was to be fishermen. They knew a lot about fishing. 
But the Bible says that night they caught nothing. And in the morning, as they looked to the side, you know, probably right early in the morning, sun's sort of just up, there is a figure. And the figure looks at them and shouts out, Friends, have you any fish? Well, of course, they said, no, we don't have any fish. The frigger said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Well, they'd been fishing all night. And I don't know if they were too keen on getting advice from a stranger on the shore. However, the experienced fishermen, not knowing who was speaking to them, threw their net on the right side of the They cast their net on the right side. And what happens? Well, they record for us. They could hardly bring the net in. Why? It was full of fish. Do you know, they then realised who it was on the shore and they made haste they got there quick and peter again you know peter the one who ran to the tomb well peter gets in the water and sort of wades there get, gets there quick and he wants to get there quick you know peter was always in a rush and they get there and they realize it is the lord jesus christ on the shore and here we go they actually had breakfast with him now breakfast was probably a bit different to what you and i have that day but I imagine it was a marvellous breakfast. They actually ate fish. They ate fish with the Lord Jesus Christ. But there was one more that I'm going to tell you about. Number six. Here we go. So number six was this one. 40 days. So nearly six weeks. Six weeks after Jesus' resurrection. He gives his close followers an instruction, one instruction, and it is this. Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. What's the good news? Well, the good news is this, that Jesus Christ has took the punishment for sin. Through him, there can be forgiveness of sin and a restored relationship with God to be enjoyed now and forever. The disciples were enjoying that. And Jesus says, don't keep that news to yourself. Go and tell everyone. Now, the Bible records that Jesus goes to heaven. Now, those disciples did go out into the world. And we're going to think about what they did, you see. But before we do that, this is what we're going to do. You're going to get your worksheet. Hopefully you've got your worksheet and we're going to match up the pictures with the phrase. If you look on your worksheet, there's six different pictures. And then there's a blank column and then there's a column with six phrases. One, two, three, four, five, six. But they're not in the right order. So. There's picture number one, but it doesn't go with phrase number one. What you've got to do is look at that picture and think, think what phrase, what speech goes with it. Is it two, three, four, five or six? Now, if you can't get number one, look at one of the other pictures and think, say picture number four, side of the lake. So what speech goes with that one? And then you put that number there and work up. On your worksheet so that in the end you've got a number next to each picture and the number will be different for each one okay so have a go at your worksheet now if you want to pause the video pause it now and then i will come back and give you the answers and we'll continue with the rest of the lesson so pause it now if you are work on your worksheet okay so well done for your completing the worksheet what we're going to do now is look at the answers to that. So they will appear on your screen. So have a good look at your screen and let us go through the answers. So there is picture number one. OK, there's picture number one. And what you've got to do is put you, you put the number there and the number was number three, because that is when Jesus says, 
Mary and she says teacher okay now look at the second picture down the answer to that one is number four look at my hands and my feet it is I myself touch me and see a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones as you see I have now third picture down and that is number five five that's where the Lord says to Thomas you know he says put your finger here see my hands reach out your hand and put it into my side stop doubting and believe okay so that's the third resurrection appearance we thought about today look at the one the next picture that's Jesus standing by the lake so perhaps we could get this one easier because it's number six friends have you any fish have you any fish he asked that was six next one down is that fifth picture now what goes with that is this number two remember Jesus came to those disciples they're walking along the road and he says what are you discussing together as you walk along and so the last picture is number one go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation so well done for doing those pictures now back so as i said jesus ascends to heaven after giving that last instruction he says he will return to this earth he's not done that yet but he's promised he will do that and christians believe he will but in the meantime he says to his followers to his first followers and to all followers now go and tell others the good news so these disciples went out and preached everywhere i'm now going to show you a short video as you watch the video i want you to listen for thomas and then remember you can't tell me we're watching a video where did thomas go to and how did he die so let's watch the video now remember it's thomas what country did he go to and how did he die the only apostle whose death the bible records is james king herod had james put to death by the sword likely a reference to beheading the circumstances of the deaths of the other apostles are related through church tradition so we should not put too much weight on any of the other accounts the most commonly accepted church tradition in regard to the death of an apostle is that the apostle Peter was crucified upside down in Rome in fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy. The following are the most popular traditions concerning the deaths of the other apostles. Matthew suffered martyrdom in Ethiopia, killed by a sword wound. John faced martyrdom when he was boiled in a huge basin of boiling oil during a wave of persecution in Rome. However, he was miraculously delivered from death. John was then sentenced to the mines on the prison island of Patmos. He wrote his prophetic book of Revelation on Patmos. The Apostle John was later freed and returned to what is now modern-day Turkey. He died as an old man, the only apostle to die peacefully. James, the brother of Jesus, not officially an apostle, was the leader of the church in Jerusalem. He was thrown from the southeast pinnacle of the temple, over a hundred feet down, when he refused to deny his faith in Christ. When they discovered that he survived the fall, his enemies beat James to death with a club. This is thought to be the same pinnacle where Satan had taken Jesus during the temptation. Bartholomew, also known as Nathaniel, was a missionary to Asia. He witnessed in present-day Turkey and was martyred for his preaching in Armenia, being flayed to death by a whip. Andrew was crucified on an X-shaped cross in Greece. After seven soldiers whipped Andrew severely, they tied his body to the cross with cords to prolong his agony. The Apostle Thomas was stabbed with a spear in India during one of his missionary trips to establish the church there. The Apostle Thomas was stabbed with a spear in India during one of his missionary trips to establish the church there. Matthias, the Apostle chosen to replace the traitor, Judas Iscariot, was stoned and then beheaded. The Apostle Paul was tortured and then beheaded by the evil Emperor Nero in Rome, A.D. 67. There are traditions regarding the other Apostles as well. 
but none with any reliable, historical, or traditional support. It's not so important how the apostles died. What is important is the fact that they were all willing to die for their faith. If Jesus had not been resurrected, the disciples would have known it. People will not die for something they know to be a lie. The fact that all of the apostles were willing to die horrible deaths, refusing to renounce their faith in Christ, is tremendous evidence that they had truly witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Wow, that was gruesome, wasn't it? I mean, really, you know, those men went out, just told the truth. They gave their witness account of what they had seen about Jesus. But look at what happened to them. And they went into all the known world at that time. Did you get with Thomas? What country did he go to? India. That's right. And how did he die? With a spear. That is correct. So well done. Do you know, the apostles going out, these close followers going out, that they went out bravely and courageous. There was one time they weren't brave, they were fearful. But when they saw the risen Jesus Christ, they now had great courage to go and tell others about him. So that's part of the reason why Christians believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Eyewitness accounts and the life of those eyewitnesses. We're actually now going to watch another short video. This is a short video, it's a bit like a cartoon, that summarises the whole Easter message, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's just watch this short video. God's Story, Easter. So part of God's story is about Easter, and it begins like this. You might know Easter as the Sunday a ginormous bunny hides chocolate inside plastic eggs. But Easter is really all about how much Jesus loves us and how God sent him to rescue us. Remember how the Jews, God's special family, were waiting for a king to come rescue them? Well, Jesus was the king and this rescue was the whole reason he came to earth. God had already rescued the Jews once before, but this time it was going to include everyone. So one night, Jesus told his friends about the rescue. Exciting, right? But talking about this rescue was sad. That's because Jesus was going to rescue the world by dying. Kids, every mean or bad thing we do deserves punishment. By dying, Jesus took our punishment. Lots of things in life have good parts and bad parts. And just like candy bars are mostly good, as long as you brush your teeth after you eat one, this story is a really good one. Anyway, talking about the rescue made Jesus sad since he didn't really want to die. Thankfully, we can talk to God when we're sad, so Jesus took a few friends into a garden to pray. In the garden, a guy named Judas, who people thought was Jesus' friend, came with some people to help arrest Jesus. Peter, one of Jesus' true friends, was so mad he cut off a servant's ear with his sword. But Jesus didn't want his friends to hurt others, so Jesus healed the ear and let them arrest him. Then Jesus was taken to trial. One of the most powerful men in the city, Pontius Pilate, wanted to let Jesus go. But many of the people wanted Jesus to die. They didn't believe he was the Son of God or any kind of king. Even after all the miracles Jesus did, like healing sick people and making blind people see, they didn't believe in him. The people were so mad, they started yelling, kill him! So Pontius Pilate let the soldiers take Jesus. The soldiers made fun of the idea that Jesus was a king. They put a crown of thorns on his head and nailed him to a cross. Many people watched, but not all of them wanted Jesus to die. His mother and close friends were there too. Just imagine how they must have felt. Once Jesus was up on the cross, the sun stopped shining for three whole hours in the middle of the day. But those soldiers kept right on making fun of him. They said, if you're really God's son, why don't you just call on some angels to save you? Jesus could have called on angels to save him, but he loved us so much that he wanted to rescue us. So instead, he prayed to God, Father, I place my life into your hands. At that moment, Jesus died. When he died, the soldiers who had just killed him realized he really was the Son of God. 
Later, Jesus was put into a tomb and a big rock blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends thought that was the end. But three days later, God sent an angel to roll the stone away. Don't worry, Jesus could get out on his own. The angel moved the rock so everybody else could see the tomb was empty. Jesus' friends were the first to stop by the tomb. The angel said, He has risen! Which is another way of saying, Jesus is alive! Nobody could believe it! Jesus took our punishment and then proved He really is the Son of God by coming back to life. Now, if we choose to follow Jesus, God forgives us for all the wrong things we do because Jesus already took our punishment. And that's the story of Easter. But that's not all there is. Here's a quick version of what happened after the angel told the good news. Jesus' friends got scared. Jesus appeared to them. They saw his scars. It was really him. Now they could share the good news too. Jesus appeared to more than 500 people. He went back up to heaven. And the best part? He promised to come back someday for everybody who follows him. And all that is a part of God's story. Wow. I hope you liked watching that little video there summarizing you know, some of the key points that were thought about in this lesson and in other lessons as well about the Lord Jesus Christ, the key figure in Christianity. So I hope you've really enjoyed uh, watching that. Now, that is the end of our four part series. So thank you very much for being with me, for following these, for doing the worksheets and all that you've done. And hopefully it's been educational, informative, and interesting and maybe a little bit of fun as we've done that as well so i'll say goodbye to you and hope to see you maybe sometime in the future who knows take care goodbye